Hi there, it's me again, Yalavanya. We are continuing the discussion on Unmai Vilakkam. We have already seen 34 verses and today we are moving on with the 35th verse. Still with the concept of the cosmic dancer or the concept behind cosmic dance. We have already seen how to visualize the cosmic dance as in the form of the cosmic dance. Today we are going to discuss about the objective or the goal behind the cosmic dance. Verse number 35 goes this way. Totram tudi adanil toyum tidi amaipil satriyidum angiile sangaram utrama unra malar padatil utra tirodam mutti nandra malar padate nad. Today, as we said, we are going to talk about the five divine operations. We have already discussed about the five operations earlier in the 36 Tattuvams itself. Today we are going to uh, go into a little bit more details on that and to say how do we visualize the cosmic dancer and what is the objective of the cosmic dance itself. Now, what are the five divine operations? We are very clear about it. The first one is creation. After that is sustenance and then we are going to dissolve it, dissolution and then concealment and finally the revelation or the realization. We are going to discuss about these in the form of cosmic dance right now. So how do we visualize this? When we talk about uh, the form of the cosmic dancer, there is one with a drums in the hand. If you look at the cosmic dancer, there are four arms. One arm has a drums in the hand. That particular hand, you need to visualize it as creation. Why? Because when the sound is coming in, we call it as the Nada Tattva. Nada Tattva is the reason for the entire universe. This is the same concept as your Big Bang Theory. Everything comes from the sound. So the creation happens using sound. So the sound waves are very important. That is what we call it as Nada Tattva. If you guys remember or if you can relate with this, the Big Bang Theory started only in the 18th or the 19th century. Whereas this particular book, this particular text, holy text is written as early as 11th to 12th century. So you can see how much uh, the Tamil Tamilians were uh, very, very strong in the, the spiritual or the metaphysical level. But just that uh, the only disadvantage we have is we are not able to translate this in English and that is the reason we were not able to project that yes we do have this knowledge and we do have this kind of a, a very strong background in metaphysical level but once you learn Tamil and you get into this that's why I said I'm not here to literally translate everything because I may not have the knowledge or skill for that I'm not an English literature trained so if you guys want to I'm just giving a taster if you want to really understand this in a very detailed level the only option is you have to learn Tamil because that's a beautiful language you will start appreciating the entire concept that is given here in a much more detailed manner I'm trying on a very superficial level to give this text in English so that at least we know what is there so if you look at it the concept of Big Bang theory is given to us right as early as the second century itself in Thirumandiram but right now we are looking at the Shastras and that is where we are again reiterating this concept so coming back the hand or the arm with the uh, drums is the one where the sound is coming in the sound waves which is the reason for the entire universe creation and that is what we call it as the creation the next one is the arm which is uh, in this particular form where uh, it, it says as if don't worry I'm there I'm going to take care of you so we call it as the preservation arm and that is what talks about the sustenance the operation or the duty the divine duty with, with this particular arm with this particular hand is to talk about sustenance the next one is fire the arm with a fire, the hand which holds on to the fireball, that is called as dissolution. And we are all aware of this. Fire eats up, swallows anything, literally anything, literally. So if there is a fire 
uncontrolled it can swallow whatever is around us including us that is why the fire uh, the the arm which is holding on to the fire is uh, the duty is taken as dissolution and the next one is the uh, concealment the fourth um, operation that we are looking at is concealment and the concealment is uh, the the main duty of uh, the the main um, part when we are looking at the cosmic dancer which is related to this you will need to understand the two feet one feet is in a swaying position another feet is holding on to the demon which is called as moyalagan we have already seen that it is not a baby it is a demon and the demon is not a literal demon over there it is a representation of our ignorance in english usually we say ignorance is bliss but honestly according to the tamil literatures ignorance is not bliss and that is the one which is causing our rebirth so the leg which is uh, which the, the the foot which is holding on to the ignorance is taken as the uh, concealment and the the feet which is swaying that is taken as the realization so what we have to aspire for is the swaying feet because that is the one which is going to give us the realization that is one which is going to be our savior the feet which is going to save us from all these permanent whatever we are suffering we are going through it is going to save us from this uh, suffering and bring us to the ever blissful state which is lord shiva's feet the feet which is swaying so when we look at lord shiva's cosmic dancer position we need to look at it in the form of mantra and we need to understand it in the form of the divine operations now why is he doing this operations this is what we call it as una nadanam when we say una nadanam nadanam is literally dance it is called as the una da- dance again i don't want to translate these because these are all uh, technical terms and uh, it will dissolve the meaning so it is called as una una uh, uh, dance and why is this performed because he needs to create he needs to sustain and he needs to dissolve whatever we are enjoying as of today in tamil in in sanskrit we call it as danu karana bhuvana bhogam which means danu means this body karanam means our senses and sense organs bhuvanam means the world and bhogam means the pleasure that we are going through so body senses the worldly affairs and at the same time the pleasure that we are enjoying all these four has to be created has to be sustained has to be dissolved has to be concealed and has to be uh, uh, given in the form so that the life can of course uh, the last two concealment and um, realization is only for soul and not for the danu karana bhuvana bhoga tanu karana bhuvana bhoga goes through only creation sustenance and dissolution other than that it doesn't go through the concealment or the uh, the the uh, concealment or the uh, realization the revelation or the concealment is only for the soul so in order for the soul to realize this in the so- in order for the soul to get the benefit from this we are we need to go through this particular dance position we need to appreciate this dance position so once we see lord nataraja in the form of cosmic dancer we need to understand that he is dancing in order to give us pleasure he is dancing to create the pleasures that the soul has to go through so that at one point in time we will get the realization to say whatever we are going through the worldly pleasures is never a pleasure and only lord shiva's feet the the swaying feet is the real real pleasure and we will start longing for that we will start yearning for that so with that we are concluding uh, verse number 35 i'll come back again with the next verse very soon until then bye bye